welcome to Town Topics, our September edition. I'm your host, Amanda Thompson, and I'm here with First Selectman Jim Hayden. How are you doing, Jim? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's been uh, it's been a blur. Uh, you know, things move quickly, anyways. But it's been a blur since like March until now. All you know, especially you know, I, I remember you know when we were talking about summer and all that sort of stuff, and summer's gone. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, today it was gone. It was 32 degrees this morning. Uh, but uh, as we're taping this uh, today on the 22nd of September, the uh, you know, the next four days is supposed to be in the 80s. So who who knows? Who knows? But anyways, uh, I am doing extremely well. And thank you for asking. And I'm looking forward to sharing information with you and with our residents regarding what's happening or what's happened and what's coming up in the future. Good. It seems like we have a, a busy fall again, which is nice to see. I'm sure our, uh, our, our biggest thing that, that you're probably dealing with is the absentee ballots, I would think. How, how is that going or how is that going to work? Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Uh, the absentee ballots. Uh, so anyways, the Secretary of State's office sent out to every voter in the registered voter in the state of Connecticut and whether it's Democrat, Republican, or unaffiliated, or Libertarian, or Green Party, everybody that is registered to vote received a uh, a letter from the Secretary of State with a application for an absentee ballot. So what you would need to do is fill that out and then mail it back, or there is a big silver box that's in front of Town Hall that is a secure box that uh, um, you would put uh, your request for a, uh, a absentee ballot in. So uh, you can drive down and put it in, you can mail it, whatever your preference would be. And um, so that's just the application for the absentee ballot. So okay. then on October 2nd, which is the nearest, is the, is the legal time that ballots can be mailed out, this, mm -hmm. the ballot will be mailed out to uh, the people that have requested the, uh, with the absentee ballot form, the actual ballot will be mailed out. And then you would fill that out. And then you would do the same process. You would either mail it or you would drop it in the secure uh, box that's in front of the uh, town hall and uh, it's emptied frequently and it's uh, it's uh, it's a pretty good sized box you can't miss it so uh, one of the things that uh, that people are concerned about is well gee what if i don't want to fill an absentee ballot out what if I want to vote in person? Is that going to be allowed? Well, yes, it is. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the absentee ballots are just a supplementary way to assist people in COVID-19 to maintain safety. Um, and the ballot, uh, the uh, election is the same as always. Uh, it'll be live in person from six in the morning until 8 p.m. on November 9th. I'm, I'm sorry, November 3rd. November 3rd, it'll be on, um, uh, and uh, so you can, you'll be able to walk in and uh, and vote. Uh, now, the absentee ballot, uh, when you eventually, October 6th, uh, by October 2nd, you, re, you it's mailed out, so you receive it the 3rd or 4th, then you fill, you know, take your time, fill it out, and then, you know, return it. Uh, the... Uh, the more folks that are comfortable doing that because of COVID-19 concerns mm -hmm. or just convenience concerns, that's fine. But uh, the uh, we're going to need to have uh, proper spacing. Uh, and, you know, people, when they vote, they'll need to have masks mm -hmm. on, like, you know, normal uh, processing uh, for, for things right now, what is normal in 2020 COVID-related. Uh, so you'll have your mask on, and you'll have to be six feet away. So it, you, when you come to the traditional polling place, which is the senior community center, you may um, look and you might see a line and you're not used to seeing lines until mm -hmm. you get inside. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean there's a zillion people there. It just means that, you know, they stretch out every six feet. Uh, there's, uh, they could go around the building. So 
um, you know, I shouldn't say around the building, but around the front of, of uh, the community center. So don't be, um, don't be nervous when you see that. Uh, it's, it's just a little bit extra step uh, and you probably won't take any more time than it normally would but you will be waiting in a different spot. So I just wanted to let people know because change is tough and change is difficult. And, oh my gosh, I see a line that's going almost over to the pond. What's going on? Uh, hopefully we'll never make it up to the library. I'm tongue in cheek with that. Uh, but, uh, you know, what's going on? Nothing's going on other than the fact that instead of being able to get people inside the building to wait, we have to have you wait. Uh, uh, in the building and outside as the line builds. So the um, nothing else changed. I mean, there's uh, we've got all the protocols in place. Uh, there's uh, the uh, plastic, uh, the plexiglass screens. There's uh, mm -hmm. the hand uh, sanitizer. Uh, there is will be frequent cleaning of the units and everything. So the mm -hmm. town is following the protocols as set out by the state and the Secretary of State uh, office. And uh, so that's all good. So don't, don't be, it, don't be put off if you see things that are a little different than normal. It, it's only because of social distancing and things like that. And it may take you a little longer than 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 what you're used to in the past. Uh, one reason for that is it's a presidential election, uh, and presidential elections are usually our most uh, uh, busy elections. Uh, I think at the last presidential election, I think we were like 83% uh, turnout, oh, wow. not a little higher. So it's traditional for that to happen. So we have roughly 3,750 uh, voters in the uh, registered voters currently uh, in East Granby. And so if you get 80% of that, you know, you've got close to 3,000 people coming out uh, uh, so to vote. So it, presidential elections are busy anyways. In this particular case, you would have the, uh, uh, you know, you could have 1,000 ballots. You could have 2,000 ballots that uh, people decide to uh, do via absentee and mail in so or drop off in the, in the box. So uh, the... Uh, it's a good old fashioned election. It's a good old fashioned everything that you normally see happen will continue to happen. You can do it either you can do it live voting or you can do it uh, uh, through the absentee ballots that will be mailed to you if you request it and they'll be mailed to you by October 2nd. Um, you, you choose one option. You, you either vote via absentee ballot or you vote in person. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, you know, that, that uh, should provide the flexibility that people need, especially if they're uh, concerned about uh, COVID, uh, you know, and people uh, can have some health issues that they would be concerned about that. And it's also, you know, November 3rd, so it's also, it, it's November 3rd, so it's, it's also... Uh, could be a, a miserable day out there. It could be a little rain. <laughs> We've seen snow flurries on November 3rd before. Uh, and um, we, uh, so, you know, you just want to be prepared, but the integrity of the process is high. The training of our registrars and our town clerk uh, has, is, is at a high level uh, and we're prepared with contingencies and we uh, want to make sure that as many people that want to vote in East Granby are able to do so and do so in such a way that uh, is not much different than what they've had before, but the environment's going to be a little different just due to COVID-19 and social distancing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, and and the people who normally run the uh, the voting, they kind of had a they had one run this spring, right? Doing. We voting. had actually in the August primary. Uh, oh yeah, the, it was the primary. Uh, That's what it was. In, in August, yeah. we had a primary, uh, but you know there was uh, you know I don't I'm estimating the numbers, but you know maybe mm -hmm. there was three hundred uh, people that voted in person, and there was yeah. 300 plus people that voted uh, via right. absentee ballot. So, uh, you know, the numbers are going to be on a much larger scale. So right. it, it, part of it is going to be social distancing spacing, but the other part of it is there's a lot more people that are going to come out to vote mm -hmm. uh, as they traditionally do for a presidential election. During the presidential election cycle, you have the president, you know, and the vice president that uh, 
uh, are being voted on. Uh, you also have the Senate uh, mm -hmm. uh, and Congress. Uh, I'm just, I, I hesitated on Senate because I don't know if one of them is up this year or not. Uh, but uh, I know the Congress every two years they have to run. And then uh, there was uh, also from a local perspective, the uh, registrars uh, are um, uh, up for uh, election. So uh, the only okay. town position that is available is the registrar position. Everything else is is either state or federal related. Okay. Very good. Is there, uh, is there a place people could look if they wanted to know, like, um, I mean, who's running for what positions? Is there like a, a place on the town website or on a state website or something so they would know what who they're looking at? We, uh, uh, the town will publish uh, on October 2nd, we'll publish okay. the, uh, the ballot, which would have okay. who's listed that's running. Uh, and um, there's, you know, there's, a lot of opportunity you know you can google information you can do mm -hmm. go to the republicans you can go to the democrats on their various websites mm -hmm. uh so there's would be a, plenty of information out there this is uh appears to be a very highly contested uh presidential election uh and uh, the passions are out there uh on one side or the other and uh, I would just remind everyone that, uh, uh, you know, in East Granby, we're used to uh, polite uh, discussion. We don't always agree, but we always have a polite discussion. And I'm sure we will continue to do so as a resident of East Granby. But, um, you know, it's pretty heated out there. Uh, we're, we're not even... I forget how many days we are away from, but you know we're roughly forty some odd days away, and uh, every time you read it in the paper or you see somebody say something or you mm -hmm. know you go on you know you, you go on social media and you you see something as simple as the governor announces the coronavirus results for the day, and then you have three hundred and fifty uh, comments uh, uh, questioning his. Uh, um, everything from soup to nuts regarding him when it's not the issue at hand, the issue at hand is COVID right. or, hey, I don't like the fact that there's executive orders. Well, that's fine. But I mean, just because somebody says something doesn't mean you have to have a comeback to it from a negative perspective. Mm -hmm. Certainly, uh, uh, you know, we encourage discussion. We encourage uh, uh, folks to understand and debate the issues, but that doesn't mean you can't be civil. Right, definitely. And I just wanted to make sure it was posted somewhere. I think so many people nowadays don't necessarily have, they don't watch television. They do a lot of whatever it is, whether it's Twitter or Netflix or that type of thing. And um, it's easy to remember maybe who's running for president and forget about who's running locally. And the people who are running, running locally really are the people who are going to um, affect your daily lives a, a, Absolutely. More significantly. Yeah. So yeah, we, uh, it gives we always people a chance say, to look up those names and do a little bit of research if they don't know. Absolutely. And we always say that during the municipal elections that this is the one that you have the most impact on, uh, but most people come out for the presidential. Uh, and right. um, and you bring up a great point of, hey, you know, you, you, you know that, you know, uh, Mr. Biden is running and you know that uh, President Trump is running, uh, mm -hmm. but you may not know some of the other spots underneath. Uh, so uh, right. we will post the ballot and that'll give you information so that you can research and, and understand who's running and what they're running for and what their um, viewpoints are. So that's all great. An educated Perfect. consumer is, yes. uh, it's is, always good. <laughs> is, is always good. So how are things going with COVID? Are there any updates as far as the town is concerned? The uh, overall, I mean, uh, we, I think since last we spoke, we probably picked up one more case. Uh, but uh, overall, we are, uh, I believe that in the Farmington Valley for sure, but I think it might be uh, in the, maybe not the state, certainly in the Farmington Valley, we have the lowest uh, uh, COVID uh, positivity uh, rate 
uh, which is running about 2%. Uh, overall, the state, uh, a little less than 2%. Uh, state, uh, for a long time, was uh, the average was 1% uh, or lower, but it's been a little bit above 1%, but it seems like it's been coming down a little bit the last couple of days. So, um, you know, and the COVID rate, uh, the uh, positivity rate means, okay, for every test, there's so many that come back positive. So in East Granby, there's been 700 and roughly 750 uh, tests. Um, uh, so if you have 13 uh, folks that come back positive, then you know that is how you come to you divide the 13 into the 750, and that's how you come up with the positivity rate. So um, uh, and what that indicates is is that uh, you know how many active cases you have, but also it's a sign. It's a uh, um, something that the uh, state and federal uh, health folks look at to see what the spread is. And uh, uh, the higher, of course, the higher the rate, the more difficult it is uh, because it means more people have it. And then how do you, you know, make sure that they have treated or some uh, asymptomatic or do some of these to go in the hospitals? The hospital rate still, there's less than 100 people still uh, hospitalized in Connecticut for COVID. I think it's probably mm -hmm. in the 80s. Uh, so, you know, and it was, there was one time when it was three or 400. So, you know, certainly that number is under control, but some of it is, and which leads me into to what I think is an important message. Okay, so the rate is only less than 2% in East Grammy. It's about 1.5%, you know, the positivity rate in, in the state. So what's this all about? What do we have to wear these things for, these masks for? And and why, uh, you know, well, why can't we do what we want? And and you're right, it, it is it is impacting folks. Uh, uh, it is inconveniencing. But one of the reasons why uh, the rate is, is low is because people are self-compliant and they are using the masks for the most part. Although the governor has decided uh, that uh, some of the incidents that he's been told about that perhaps there needs to be fines and so fines were implemented as of Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, but we won't even get into the fine part of it. It'll just get into it's a lot of decisions need to be driven by science and science is the positivity rate or some of the other rates that are used by health uh, professionals um, and also uh, you know a simple thing like a mask is something that can uh, well it's inconvenient it can prevent uh, the aerosol sp spread of the virus if you had it in the air which could be picked up by somebody else. So, you know, is it foolproof? No. Is it some, you know, is it wishful thinking that the mask will save everything? Um, well, I don't think it's wishful thinking, but, you know, it's it's just a tool that you can use. So um, the reason why I spent a couple of minutes with it is I don't want folks to get overconfident and say, okay, well, this is on, you know, this is all set, so we're all set. And, and you know, uh, we can learn from other states and, you know, states mm -hmm. opened up bars uh, and all of a sudden they had, you know, within a week, I believe it was Texas, had to close the bars down because they right. that's where there was a lot of congregating of people and people um, weren't social distancing or wearing masks. Uh, and so what happened is, you know, this the spread started to happen again. So just because good things are happening and the numbers are good and thankfully things seem to be in the right direction, we don't want to get overconfident, as I mentioned, and we want to do the simple things that may really help prevent the spread going into the November traditional flu season mm -hmm. so so here you have you, you have you know they excuse me a second
My apologies to you, Amanda, to the audience. Um, one of the things that uh, we do as a result of uh, COVID restrictions is we are um, we have these virtual meetings. And so we, you, I made the mistake of not shutting door, and it was a very important conversation going on, very important conversation regarding, of all things, the election by uh, a couple, by the registrar with, with our administrative assistant. And because of the fact that they both had their masks on, uh, they were talking loud and so I wasn't able to concentrate and I apologize for that um, and uh, uh, so anyways uh, hopefully you can remember what point I was on so that I can finish the point up and we can go forward I think you were just talking about the the masks and the importance of right of sure, the right masks. so so don't get lulled into overconfidence let's continue to do the things that have uh, helped uh, us be successful in preventing the spread uh, whether that's the state or or in the town and uh and keep up the good work and 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 it is uh it is aggravating uh it is irritating it is a pain sometimes but you know what if you look at it this way if you could use a mask and it would save a friend of yours of having some medical issue, would you do it in a heartbeat? You bet you you would. So just think about it that way, please. And sooner or later, we'll live in a non-COVID world. Uh, but right now, we're in a COVID-related uh, uh, world. And the better we do these things, the better we're going to have with the health results and the quicker the health results are where they need to be, the quicker we can move on. That sounds good. Thank you for going over all of that. Um, so the town hall is still still open by appointment, right? No, no, the town and hall is open. Uh, full open? Oh, we're, totally full, open. we're full open. We're full open. Uh, the uh, uh, town, some of the other town buildings are still appointment only senior services and, and things like that. But uh, okay. town hall, uh, we always were open for business, um, but uh, we weren't, the doors were unlocked. Uh, we have, uh, we are open for regular business. You can walk in. All we ask is that you have the mask on. Okay. Uh, we, you go to the state, to whatever office that you need. And, uh, you know, one of the things that's great about a, uh, a small town is uh, when people stop in to a particular office to do their business, sometimes they walk by and they stick their head in and they say hello to all the offices on the way down. Now, we uh, are still friendly, but we ask that you don't do that. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. But uh, certainly, uh, we're open for business live and in person, and we okay. encourage you, if you'd like to do that, to go ahead and do that uh, and wear your mask uh, and follow whatever signage that you need to follow. Uh, but uh, you may have gotten used to you using the online resources, and if that's what you want to do, that's fine, too. Uh, just okay. uh, uh, By the way, commission meetings and board meetings and things like that are still... Uh, are still uh, via uh, virtual meetings or Zoom. Okay. Uh, and uh, there occasionally uh, could be a live meeting, you know, if it was something mm -hmm. from planning and zoning or something like that. But primarily yeah. we are strictly, uh, uh, you know, virtual meetings. Uh, I would expect uh, one of the things that, that towns have asked the governor to look at, including our town is, uh, making uh, uh, hybrid meetings legal. So mm -hmm. right now, uh, they, there's not anything that prevents you from having a hybrid meeting. A hybrid meeting being some people in person and some people via the uh, internet or via Zoom in our particular case. So I yeah. would think that that will, will happen, but right now, uh, we're still at uh, the uh, virtual meetings, uh, and but sooner or later, we'll get back to normal on meetings too. Yeah. But uh, I think uh, one of the things we've learned uh, with the virtual meetings is we've get more attendance and that's because it's more convenient for people. And, you know, especially if, you know, you've got, you know, you're helping children with homework or their younger children where mm -hmm. maybe one person, one of, you know, husband or wife could go, but not both. Well, if yeah. you got the kids buttoned down for a, for a sleep uh, or, or, doing something that is occupying their time, you can then, you know, click on the computer and 
watch something uh, that uh, and get more informed. So I think the virtual has actually been good. I think it's allowed yeah. access. We're working on the legalities of it. Okay. Well, that's great. Well, one thing that we normally do in the fall is we have the hazardous waste collection. And um, I know you can go to any town and, and it will count, but we have the, our local one coming up soon. Yeah, yeah, well, I should say any local MDC towns, as right. you see, it's, we do it through MDC. And so there's eight or nine different towns that you can do. Uh, we have, uh, for several years, uh, partnered with Windsor Locks. And so on October 10th, uh, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Windsor Locks Public Works Garage, uh, there will be the collection. So you can bring your hazardous waste, you know, so anything from paint cans to to oil to other things um, I at this point I would also mention to you that although we don't do hazardous waste at the recycling center we do you know recycle all sorts of stuff uh, whether it's uh, batteries or lights, uh, light bulbs uh, that are in the area where uh, the electronics are, are recycled is free recycling uh, for for the uh, electronics and for cardboard and, and plastic. Uh, so there's free recycling, but you know, if you've got several things that you know, you just say, you know, I've got to get rid of these. And by the way, if you go to www.thethemdc.org, you um, will you and you click on the page for hazardous waste uh, disposal. It'll tell you it gives you like 30 items that are, are, are things that you can bring to the recycling uh, for the hazardous waste recycling gives you all the information that you need. So mm -hmm. uh, that'll be October 10th, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Windsor Locks Public Works Garage at 6 Stanton Road in Windsor Locks. For more information, you can um, go on uh, the mdc.org or uh, email uh, us right here at uh, uh, info at egtownhall.com and we'll answer any questions that you have. The info at egtownhall.com is a quick and easy way to get information. We encourage you to do that. And uh, you know, if you're not quite sure where to get the information for the hazardous waste, uh, mm -hmm. give us a shout at info at egtownhall.com and we'll be glad to get you what you need. Sounds good. So September is Emergency Preparedness Month. So what does that mean exactly? It means that traditionally in September, October, November, there's a lot of storms. And so they, uh, to, to get people ready for it, uh, the, for several years, uh, the state has pushed it, uh, September as a being getting ready for emergencies, uh, whether it's the winter storms where power goes out or, or other things like that. Well, we've had our storms and our power outages before September. So, but with that said, uh, just wanted to, to let you know that there's information um, available uh, if you wonder, well, what sort of items should I have in the house? So what, should I have a go bag? You know, what is it? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how much, uh, you know, remember if you don't have power, you don't, if 70% of us don't have water because we have wells. So, you know, it's mm -hmm. just some really good helpful hints. So, hey, have, have uh, water available for potable water, they call it drinking water, but also have Mm -hmm. it available for um, toilets uh, and you know I've and many of us in, in town uh, over the years have acquired rain barrels that uh, collect the rain. So that's a, you know, that's a great source of water for toilets uh, uh, because if you don't have water and you don't have flushing toilets, you know, it's, you know, that obviously is a problem. So it, it's got all sorts of good hints like that in it. Um, and you just go to the town website, uh, www w.eastgrambyct.org and then you'll see on the front page some emergency information otherwise mm -hmm. just put in search for look for the emergency management uh, page and there'll be a lot of really helpful information in there included also in uh, in the let's talk turkey is there's always information about from the fire marshal or from emergency uh, management so there's a lot of good stuff in there so you never you never know when it's going to happen uh, and uh, uh, you know you you, you want to remember about 
you know, emergency supply kit with water for drinking and sanitation, flashlights, food, and requirements for pets. Perfect. And that Thank information you. is available uh, on the town website or use the info at egtownhall.com uh, and we'll give you the actual link so it'll be easier for you. Okay, okay. sounds good. Um, the advisory committee, I assume this is, um, you're, they're still trying to find some people for the um, Hartford Foundation for Public Giving? Yeah, I just wanted to, okay. the Let's Talk Turkey got into everybody's uh, homes on Saturday and there's information in there. Oh, um, and so I just wanted to mention it. I think they do have some good volunteer lists and everything, uh, but just uh, you never can have too many volunteers. So the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving established $100,000 in community funds for the town of East Granby. And their purpose is to support residents and taking ownership towards the needs of uh, in our town. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, $50,000 would be available uh, as uh, as an annuity, so that every year there would be two or three thousand dollars thrown uh, thrown out by the the uh, I'm calling it an annuity, but it, by a trust, I guess it is more appropriate. And the other fifty thousand dollars is available for a project in town. So the volunteers would help determine what would be needed in town uh, and what to use that funding for it. This is not st uh, related with the state, this is not related with the town, but it's town residents and, and it's mm -hmm. a great uh, opportunity for us to receive $50,000. $50,000 from the, uh, I guess we, we're doing this, taping this a little later than normal and I guess my phone goes nuts late in the afternoon. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is a good test of your patience and focus today. <laughs> so we, uh, so anyways, the, uh, my apologies to all. Uh, and so, uh, you know, so residents were seeking uh, town residents to play a lead role in, in deciding how the community funds will be used and to ensure that the funds will have the greatest impact. Um, looking for diverse voices to apply for a position on the advisory committee. Uh, and, you know, when you hear, you know, apply for a position and sign up, you know, be on the committee. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, the, uh, uh, the committee would then work to review applications. Uh, so there's uh, lots of good things that can happen as a result of this. And we need some volunteers on the selection committee because ultimately they will ask for proposals. So we need people on the selection committee um, and, uh, you are the uh, easiest way if you've got your Let's Talk Turkey still is to get the information off of there. Uh, you can email East Granby Greater Together at gmail.com or call 860 266 4977 or better yet, info at egtomhall.com and we'll provide the information for you. So that it'll be an active link. So uh, okay. uh, it's, uh, we appreciate uh, what the Hartford Foundation is doing. I know we've got several volunteers already. And in the end, it'll be a community uh, that will decide what it is that would be a great proposal to use the $50,000 on. Great. Well, I think that's, that's good that it's all in Let's Talk Turkey too. So everyone can look that up. And I always find, if you don't mind me adding, um, maybe somebody doesn't read it and you think, gosh, I know somebody who'd be great on that board or who's looking to do something more, like then ask them and ask them to be a part of that board or tell them about that. Because sometimes people just don't know um, or they don't realize, you know, that they could be an asset to our town in that way or haven't thought about it before. So if you know someone great, ask them too. Maybe it doesn't fit into your schedule or you can't do it, but you might know someone great who could. That so is a I'm great- I'm really excited a, about it. So I wanna give that's a- That's a great point. <laughs> that's great. So um, usually in October, we have lots of fun things coming up uh, and, and we're still going to be able to do empty bowls, it sounds like. Yes, yeah, so, uh, the uh, you, you need to get you know when times get tough you need to get creative. So the uh, uh, you know the empty bowls, which is put on by the Expressions Pottery Workshop and Women's Club of East Granby and Friend to Friend, is going to have the 20th annual empty bowls drive-through. And so that many of us have 20 years worth of bowls in our <laughs> at our house, uh, in, in our cabinets. Uh, anyways, it's a fundraiser, um, and it'll be held Saturday, October 24th, 
from 11.30 to 1.30. And all proceeds uh, benefit the Friend of Friend Food Pantry, which provides food to pre-qualified East Gravy residents in, uh, in need. Uh, normally, it's a sit-down event. This year, it would be a drive-through venue to safely continue this fall tradition. There's a mail uh, and form to purchase tickets for your to-go bags, or you can purchase it online at www.friendtofriendeg.com. Um, and each bag, um, so you purchase a ticket, you'll drive by, uh, you, there'll be directions and arrows and volunteers. And they'll give you a uh, bag that will contain a, uh, a hand potted uh, bowl, one coupon for a featured bowl or soup, and one coupon for a featured dessert confection from participating restaurants and shops. That would be valid through December 31st. So the um, uh, it's uh, a little different, but it's still uh, you still get those beautiful, gorgeous bowls. Uh, you'll still get the great soup and the great desserts. It's just going to be a little different. Uh, you'll you, you'll have to wait a little bit before you you get those, but um, you know it's it's something that uh, is uh, is always been a great, well attended. Three hundred to four hundred people uh, every year do that. It's a huge fundraiser for friend to friend, and. Um, there is no administrative cost or anything. Uh, it all goes to the friend of friend who goes to the food pantry. So it, you know, it, sometimes you wonder. You say, "Hey, you know, this money that I'm donating does it really get to where it needs to go? It really mm -hmm. gets to where it needs to go. There is no, uh, uh, no uh, administrative fees or anything like that." So, uh, anyways, uh, it's a coupon this year. It's uh, you know, it's tickets, and then you get the the bowl, and then it's coupons, um, and uh, it also will you know in the bag with the the uh, bowl, it will also you know explain the process to you who you know the overview of the event, and who, who the participating restaurants are be and uh, will be, and also. Um, the traditional complimentary pumpkin from Mr. Peter L. Brown, who for many, 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 many years has donated a couple of beds worth of uh, pumpkins. And so, you know, uh, if you're like me, what happens is, you know, you you buy your ticket, you go inside, you get to, you pick your bowl, you, you get the soup that you want, then you walk down to, uh, to, um, the pottery uh, expressions pottery workshop and you walk in and you know you go up to the you know up the second floor you get your donut or your cookie or any other dessert and then you walk back down you can pick up the pumpkin on your way out and you walk to your car whether that's over at the town hall complex or over where uh, currently it's uh, science plus it used to be the northwest bank um, community bank so um the tradition is still there. The fundraiser is still there. It's just, you know, the gratification for a dessert or for a, uh, a soup uh, may not be the same day. Yeah. Well, good. Well, that was really cool that they came up with another way to work it. So, so I could still have it's, it's, a, it's um, amazing how creative people can be and the logistics and everything. And it's not a case of, oh, gee, let's take a year off. It's, hey, how can we figure this out? It's such a great cause. Let's continue it. And, you know, I mean, our senior services did the same thing. Uh, we, uh, a couple of weeks back, uh, the we had a drive through luau. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, so we, uh, you know, there was, and uh, it was during lunchtime. Uh, so we, you know, many of us from town hall came over and mm -hmm. volunteered our time and we had uh, uh i had uh, uh, believe it or not you, you think i always wear button down shirts i actually had a hawaiian shirt on and uh and we, it was fun and festive but we had people that would drive up and they had decorated the cars one car had a grass skirt around the front of it i mean so the seniors <laughs> got into it uh, we got into it uh uh, it was a box lunch. There was you could actually play game from your car. Uh, there was a lot of fun things. So it's oh, a different way of life with COVID nineteen and mm -hmm. the restrictions. But people figure out a way. Whether it's a senior services doing the luau, uh, we yeah. had thirty five participants for that, or whether wow. it's uh, the folks behind the. Uh, 
uh, empty bowls have figured out a way to make this happen. So creativity is wonderful and the enthusiasm is, is uplifting. And thanks to all, to all the volunteers for all they do and all that they figure out how to get things to work, even yeah. in these times. That's fantastic. Well, how is everything going with the schools? The uh, things are going fine with the schools. Uh, the, uh, they've you know, got the, uh, this, uh, the guards in place that they need to have. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, um, you know, it's, it's a difficult uh, situation for teachers, uh, teachers, parents, and of course, primarily the students. It's a whole different mm -hmm. world for them. Two days live in person, three days not. Uh, the um, idea was sometime in mid-October, uh, perhaps uh, the that ratio can change where it'd be more in person, uh, but uh, they're still measuring, they're seeing the results, and they're still seeing you know, if you know, from a state perspective and a Farmington Valley Health District perspective. So overall, things are going fine, although it is a challenge for, uh, like I said, students, parents, and teachers. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is I just want to formally congratulate some of the uh, administrators at the school district. Uh, um, uh, Melissa Bavaro Grande, I hesitated because everybody knows her as Missy, uh, is it was formally appointed in this uh, in the summer as the superintendent. So she was acting superintendent. She is the permanent superintendent, uh, and uh, we certainly in. Uh, I uh, have uh, all of us know her that have been in town for a while because she's been in the school district for 12, 13, 14 years um, in, as East Granby Middle School uh, principal. Prior to that, she was East Granby High School principal. So she's um, she's done uh, uh, some great things uh, in her previous positions. and. Congratulations, you have the job as superintendent. By the way, figure out how to have school happen August 31st, please. So yeah. <laughs> the administrators uh, and the staff and the and everyone else have done a great job with that. Um, Mrs. Uh, Mela Ullinger, uh, she, uh, Mela used to be the principal for many, many years at Algrove and she retired as of September 1st. And we congratulate her um, for all the different things that Mail has done. And uh, we uh, are uh, uh, certainly uh, wish her well in her retirement. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Phelan, uh, who was uh, the interim uh, middle school principal and prior to that was the assistant principal at the high school, who is now the permanent middle school high school principal. And Bob McGrath, who was formerly of Seymour School principal for several years, was appointed to uh, the Algrove School as the principal. So uh, the, uh, uh, that would leave one other spot uh, open at, at Seymour, and that is uh, Mrs. Uh, Buchenbach has been appointed as the permanent uh, principal over at Seymour. So we have Mrs. Uh, Bavaro Grande as the uh, superintendent, um, Mr. Phelan as the middle school permanent uh, principal, Mr. McGrath um, traded uh, schools and he is the uh, principal now at Algrove. And congratulations to Mrs. Lokenbach for being promoted from Dean of Students to at the high school to a principal at the uh, at the high school. The only one that really didn't change uh, was uh, uh, Mr. DeMillo. So Tony stayed uh, as the high school principal. Uh, Mrs. Gogel remains as the director of student services. And uh, Mrs. Light is continues as the curriculum and professional learning director. So uh, we have, uh, if you look at it, you have two, four, five, six, seven, eight positions and uh, five of those folks are either now permanent or we're in a different position. So mm -hmm. you stir in all the different uh, uh, logistic issues that you need to do to make school happen. Plus that it just shows uh, what great people they are and what a great job they're doing uh, as they transition A into a new job or B into the COVID-19 school uh, reality. So by, uh, that's why I wanted to publicly recognize them and thank um, the students, 
the parents and the teachers and the administrators for everything they're doing so that we can continue to have um, good education here in East Grammy. Well, thank you. That's uh, congratulations to all of you for your new positions. So do we have, um, we have the flu clinics, or I should say it's flu season is coming up and people are getting their shots. So there, is there going to be a flu clinic in town? As a matter of fact, there will be the uh, annual flu clinic will be at the East Granby Senior Center. Uh, and it'll be Monday, October 19th from 3.30 to 5.30. And uh, we, um, uh, if you want to get in, uh, to, participate in the flu clinic, you should call the Farmington Valley VNA uh, at 860-651-3539 for an appointment. So it'll be appointment only, it'll be masks, mm -hmm. there'll be socially distancing and everything. Um, there'll be a consent form that you'll need and they'll, they'll, you'll have to go to the website for it. So, but don't let any of that put you off. If you, you went in doubt, first of all, know that the flu clinic is October 19th from 3.30 to 5.30. It's going to be at the East Granby Community Center. And when in doubt, email information at info at egtownhall.com. And we'll make sure you get the websites or the telephone numbers or anything else that you need. Um, Walk-ins are welcome, but uh, they really prefer appointments. So right. that way they can structure things out and, and know what they need to do. So uh, mm -hmm. the flu clinic uh, will be happening on the 19th at the senior center. Uh, please uh, look for information and let's talk Turkey or um, give a give a call to uh, the VNA at 651-3539 uh, for an appointment or um, just ask us for the information in the town at info.egtownhall.com. And masks mm -hmm. are required. Okay. So the prescription card program, this has been something that's going on for a that, while, right? Yeah, we've had it for many, many years. Uh, and we um, uh, per periodically, I just mentioned it to everybody. So mm -hmm. there, if you um, if you have uh, something, some prescriptions or, or things that could even be laser surgery or things like that, uh, hearing aids um, that you don't have covered by insurance, there's a, you, there is a discount that's available at no cost uh, to you uh, for if you get a card. So the average uh, in the program is 52% savings. Uh, every resident is eligible to participate. It's free. Uh, the card is free to town uh, participants and taxpayers. And um, all you have to do is you can uh, email that address that I gave you, info at egtownhall.com, or better yet, you can go uh, on www.ctrxdiscountcard.com and you'll be able to print your own card. Or now that Town Hall is open, we have a literature rack, and in the literature rack, we have the cards. Uh, so. Uh, if you're you know, if you're doing a purchase, a uh, uh, you know, prescription or or something related medical, and you don't it's not covered by insurance or you don't have insurance, it may be a way to really save some money. So I really encourage you to to use it uh, and uh, to uh, to use the website to print it or come to Tom Town and pick one up. And it, you know, I mean, CVS uses it, Walgreens accepts it, Stop and Shop. I mean, it's all things that uh, the stores that you shop at uh, mm -hmm. they use it. So uh, and it's eligible for. So it's just periodically, once or twice a year. I always mention it because if you have an opportunity to save some money, uh, you should do so. And yeah, we should make sure that we allow help you to do so by giving you the information. Fantastic. And how is everything going at the library? The library is uh, is doing well. Uh, they uh, they they're doing still kind of is modified appointments. Uh, you you know you can uh, basically uh, you can still you know do things online and do on um, uh, curb pickup, or mm -hmm. you can you know set up uh, an, an appointment and come in uh, and. Basically, you know, sometimes you, you know, well, gee, I forgot that I uh, wanted to go there. Or what do I do? Well, the library is always very nurturing and very caring and very understanding. And sometimes um, if you just 
come to the library and say, hey, is this a good time? Can I come for the next half hour or 40 minutes? Yeah, I think they're doing half hours. Uh, then, uh, you know, then you may be able to walk right in. So I don't want you to think, well, gee, I got to you know, have an appointment and I forget. Well, yeah, you do need to have an appointment. But if you forgot, sometimes uh, uh, due to the size of the library and the friendly nature of the library, they're able to help you figure it out. So they might even say, hey, why don't you hang out for a couple minutes and then we'll have you come in. But I really want to encourage you to use the library, uh, whether online or in person. And um, it uh, certainly is uh, is something that is an asset uh, in town and uh, worthy of your support, uh, whether it's financial support or whether it's just by using it, by uh, and, and using all the wonderful resources that they have. Got a lot of great people up there uh, that uh, that are librarians or administrators, and so it's open. Curbside pickup is available. Walk and browsing and copy and fax services. Um, are, are available um, appointments that I discussed primarily for computers and Wi-Fi. So uh, if you have uh, any questions, certainly contact the library. All right. Sounds good. Well, it sounds like we have a, a full October here and we're slowly getting into some of some of our normal routine things in a creative way, it's, which is it's great. It's nice. Uh, as I was preparing for this today, uh, as I prepare for all of them, uh, but I was looking and I said, you know, it's nice to be talking about something, uh, something other than some of the, uh, you, know, you know, 40 of the 50 minutes talking about COVID related things or things like that. So I think yes. we reversed, I think we did COVID for 10 minutes and we did everything else. So it's fun to, to start to get back to normal, certainly enjoy our conversations and your questions. And it's nice to start to feel, um, a little, you know, the reality of hey, things, things aren't all just COVID related anymore. Yeah. Well, good. Well, thank you so much. This will conclude our September episode of Town Topics, and we'll see everyone in October. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Amanda. Thank you.